A wise man once said, at a football club there's a holy trinity, the manager, the players and the supporters. During the turbulent reign of Tom Hicks and George Gillette, a Liverpool fans union called Spirit of Shankly was created. A union instrumental in the departure of the largely unpopular Americans, a union from which an idea was born. In a previous life I worked in IT and I didn't understand enough tech and obviously podcasting was a new thing and a lot of the big titles like The Times and The Guardian had their shows. I was doing quite well and and there was kind of like this massive gap because it was either that or like these homebrew back kitchen jobs. And I just thought, you know, if there was, I thought, I know plenty of lads who think I know a lot about football and, you know, and they're interesting and I thought if you could just capture that, you know, like the post-match in the pub, the chatter and all that. and. Uh, if you could do it, but present it in a, in, a, in, a, in a fresh way, in a professional way, the people might like it. I mean, we didn't know for certain, but we, we tried it and uh, we, we give it a flyer and now uh, I spend most of my time tweaking bits of audio that no one takes any notice of. Andy asked me in July 2011 uh, and he mentioned it a couple of times and it was, yeah, you know, I knew Andy from back uh, at the start of Spirit of Shankly and all that sort of stuff. And he just sort of found me a couple of times and said, I want you to do this thing. I was editor of a fanzine back, back then. Uh, other people were involved in sort of spirit of Shankly and things like that. It actually started when we had Hicks and Gillette as owners of the club. And I actually think in a weird way that helped us as the Anfield Rap because it made, it made fans active online. It, made, it meant people were talking to each other on forums, on Twitter, on Facebook and that sort of thing. And it meant, you know, the likes of yourself and other people involved, we built up quite big followings because we were writing about what was going on with Hicks and Gillette, what they were doing to the club. And then subsequently it meant that when we did want to start as a podcast and talk about the Anfield Rap, we could reach people quite easily and I think that's why it's grown in the way it has. It's the Pink the Anfield Rap post-match show after Liverpool beat Crystal Palace by one of our goals to zero of their goals. Uh, and I'll start with Phil Blundell really. Uh, one nil is a really good result for the Reds in this sort of scenario. It felt very much like a, a match between two big European games, which is what it was. The po first podcast was in August 2011. We put the pilot out, we weren't going to, but we thought it went well. And we put it out and at first it was nervous and it was probably fewer jokes. Um, just not quite working out how to enjoy it at, at first, if you know what I mean. Like it was good, but it was so, still you know, working out how to, how to have fun with it. And then it sort of grew from there. <laughs> And within 10 weeks we had Rafa Benitez on in the show, which is mad, and he'd just been dismissed by Liverpool, and we had him on, and I think the first couple of weeks, because of the, we hired the professional studio, Pass Street, where Coldplay recorded a couple of albums, that was that was a very deliberate, unnegotiable um, part, part of starting it. We wanted the professional environment, a proper studio. So that kind of established us and got us a bit, a bit of attention. We started sort of August 2011, and by March 2012, we had our own radio show, which was quite unprecedented as well. And, you know, we, I think we've got to give a shout out really to, to Radio City because, you know, Steve Hoddersall, who runs the place there, you know, he came to us and he was very brave to say, I've heard your podcast, I think it's great, and I'd love to do a radio version of that. And we were all like, well, none of us have done radio. And he said, I don't care, I just want you to do exactly what you're doing with your Monday podcast don't swear, uh, and uh, we'll put you on the radio and we'll see what happens, and we're still on the radio to this day. It is the Anfield Rap on Radio City Talk, half six Liverpool, and we're overexcited. I can't believe how open the game was, and then at half time you thought, well, they'll, they'll close up now, within that first two minutes of the second half was unreal. We've seen it under Klopp since he came in, that it's kind of like end-to-end -end stuff, and as John said, you know, you're on the edge of your seat half the time. We can and will argue till we're blue in the face over transfer strategy, but I don't think he thinks we've got the personnel to grind out a result, but we have got the personnel to go and win 4-3. As the word spread about the Anfield rap, the clamour for more content grew louder and louder. And by March 2015, the operation turned professional. People were complaining, oh, I can't believe we've got to wait till Friday for another show. So we just got together and said, OK, well, we'll give people as much as, as, much as they can handle, as much as we can throw at them. But obviously it's, you know, because it, it was a bit of a strain on us running the website to do the podcast and radio show as well. So it got to the point of saying, OK, you can have as much as you like, but you're going to have to pay something for it. So we launched a subscription service, £5 a month, which we thought was fair for around 40 shows extra a month. And people, people jumped on it. People came with us and I think that's the nicest thing is we actually like our audience, broadly speaking, and we've sort of honed them a little bit. We're quite happy to challenge them. They're quite happy to challenge us and that's the best part of it really is 
I feel like the listeners of the regular free show and those who subscribe and pay us five pounds a month, these are good people and these are our people and we're their people, if you know what I mean, and it's, it's got a nice sort of communal feel. For our free show on a Monday, we'll regularly do close to 100,000 downloads uh, just for the one show. Uh, the Friday show is we do it on a radio, which gets about 60,000. And so uh, it's it's a lot of people who are listening every week, as I say, in over 90 different countries. Our favorite one is in Vatican City. I don't know if it is the big man himself, but, um, but, but, but <laughs> if, he, if he is, do get in touch and we'll send you a T-shirt. There's more countries that I listen to it than don't. I can say that absolutely definitively and in big numbers as well, which is crazy when you think about it. With you until half past seven, and this is the little bit of the show where we speak to Sean Rogers about what the opposition might well be looking to do when they come to Anfield this weekend. Everything's about the philosophy and realistically one way of playing. Now, yeah, what does he do? I'm a, a failed footballer basically from my teenage years and uh, I, I really got into my coaching when I was, I was playing with friends, Sunday League, and I was starting to do all my coaching badges and, and working in non-league. and. Um, Andy Heaton had a background uh, in radio and, and he knows quite a lot of the local non-league clubs. So Andy had asked me to go up and do a show with the Anfield Rap. And it was when we were in Par Street in the studios up there, and there'd be eight or nine of us fighting over one microphone. <laughs> when the, the lads were releasing Tour Player, they were obviously looking at the type of shows that, that they wanted to release. And I think they wanted to do a kind of Monday night football kind of slant, really, and to do some form of review. So they basically said that they'd like me to do that show. We have the luxury of having more time than the pundits and I actually think some of the analysis of the goals is wrong. Um, now I've got the beauty of being able to take a few days on that and look at stills and different angles and re rewind and rewind, whereas you know, everyone else doing the show or, or doing match of the day as an example, they just haven't got that time because of what they've got to do in their role. So we're able to sort of analyse that a little bit clearer and the good thing for us is, although we're a podcast, everyone listening to the review has seen these clips back. From tactics to transfers, from music to managers, from history to the here and now, every theme is explored by the people, for the people. When we do interview people, whether it's players at the highest level, uh, managers, former managers, what we're not looking for is the line. We're not looking to hook the story. We just want a conversation. I think it's more about, almost about the story of, of what it's like to be a Liverpool fan, the ups and downs, the, the stressing about transfers, the, how it feels when you get a big result and you get out to match that elation, how it feels when you get beat, that deflation. You know, it, it, it's, it's more of that, it's not, it's not straight reporting, it's not, um, it's not top and tail in the report and sending it on the whistle to, for someone to edit and put up on a website. It's more about the emotion, it's more about the passion. It's not the fellow ringing at 6.06 because he's furious. We want to be kind and we want to remember that footballers and people who work at football clubs are humans and that football is also a game of mistakes. That, you know, people will make mistakes all the time. So if you slaughter a player because he's made a mistake, well, there's 11 op opponents who are trying to make him make a mistake. You don't want to seem too close to the to the club because we're an all, we're an authentic fan voice, and that's what that's what kind of sets us apart, and that's what we've modelled ourselves on. So if you do if you do too much with Liverpool, then people might think that you know you you have to favours and things like that. So we have to be careful with it. Defined by its independence and originality, the Anfield Rap has won multiple awards, and with a staff of ten full time employees, it's been able to branch out and take the brand worldwide. Liverpool fans as far away as Hong Kong, San Francisco, Dubai and Sydney have all enjoyed the humour and enthusiasm of the live shows. You couldn't do what we do even six, seven, eight years ago because it just wasn't, the, the technology wasn't accessible. And now, it, and now it is. If you know you've got a little bit of knowledge, it doesn't cost the world to be able to produce something that sounds professional and authentic. It mirrors football in a way. Teams never go sideways and you never stand still. You either get better or get worse. And the minute you take your eye off the ball and get a little bit complacent when you go back, and so we're always looking for new things and new angles and trying to improve and just stay one, one step ahead. It's quite mad that, you know, because back then we were putting our hands in our pockets to, you know, hire studio space and all that sort of thing. So it's a bunking out of work, getting time off to come and record it and get it out there. And you know, now we've been fortunate enough that we've managed to turn it into the day job and you know, we're very glad for all the people who supported us over the years that we've reached this point. It was a hobby, it was a test of water thing and now here we are you know, in 2017, you know, 10, 11 staff full time, office in, in Liverpool city centre. 
doing what we love as a, as a job. Our best marketing tool has always been word of mouth and people saying to Liverpool fans telling each other, oh, have you heard the Anfield rap? It's really good, the guys know what they're talking about, it's really passionate, they're really funny and so there's always a game to look forward to, there's always something to analyse, there's always a, a brilliant press conference from Jürgen Klopp that we can look into and try and read things from, so football never stops and neither do we. There isn't an end game uh, at the moment. There possibly will have to be one. I mean, there's some sort of point coming where people are going to be sick of listening to me. Um, uh, you know, having now done this since 2011, so that, uh, it, it, more than reasonable if people are. I'd, I'd probably side with them. Uh, but at some point, you know, those have been at the core of this. We will move on because, you know, lives change and people's needs and wants change. But for now, you know, I'm looking forward to talking about the Champions League campaign. I'm looking forward to hopefully talking about another challenge for the title. I'm looking forward to getting stuck into all of that and doing so with people, with 95 contributors, most of whom I like a great deal <laughs> and you know, love spending time with and would gladly spend time with outside of a studio and that's, that's the thing that I'm looking forward to.